clutter is like the sneaky cold virus that comes in on a whisper. At first, you don't notice its entrance. It hides in the quiet recesses of the unnoticed, slowly building on itself until it gets nice and comfy. Then it begins to multiply, stretching beyond natural, taking over territories not able to coexist peacefully in its presence. Before long, it clouds the once pure space that offered tranquility and rest. It thrives in the new chaos that it forms, casting upon us an obnoxious force that inevitably overruns the very environment that we need to sustain our focus, health, and overall quality of life. Quite frankly, clutter gets in the way. Clutter tempts us to procrastinate. That's right, it beckons us to focus on what's around us instead of what's right smack in front of us, the things we should be paying attention to. Clutter is like a clogged highway. It doesn't allow for freedom of movement. Horns are beeping, tempers are flaring, and we are just idle, unable to get away from the mess. We cannot accelerate. We cannot flee the scene. We are prisoners to the limitations set by the conditions. No matter how much we focus on getting out of the madness, we simply cannot. We have left no room to circumvent the charged emotions or the pileup of excess. We find ourselves stuck in the middle of the crazed chaos, and unless we choose to forego the similar roadways in the future, we are at risk of losing ground on our pursuits. As the clutter progresses, we further digress. Clutter is toxic. It eats away at our prolific intentions. It covers us in a film of weariness and frustration that clouds our creative ingenuity. Clutter enters our lives in many forms. It can be in the form of low-yield tasks, physical stuff, emotional demands placed on us, or even constant worry over things way outside of our control. We allow clutter in for many reasons. We may find comfort in keeping things, afraid to let go of them for sentimental or even practical reasons. We may want to please people and not disappoint them by saying no to their demands. We may expect too much of ourselves and overcommit to tasks. We may be incessant warriors who fear losing control over a situation if we stop thinking about it. Whatever the reason for letting clutter in, we have to understand that it impedes on our ability to be clear and focused. Neuroscientists at Princeton University studied the differences of people's task performance in an organized versus disorganized environment. The results showed that clutter competes for your attention, resulting in decreased performance and increased stress levels. Now, I don't know about you, but I do not want to live within those parameters. So what can you do? Here are some ideas to get rid of clutter in your life. First thing is give away an item daily or weekly. Go around your space and tune into the clutter. Find an item and ask yourself if it brings value to your life. If it does not, give it away, sell it, or recycle it. A second idea, fill a recycle bag. Select an area in your home to place a recycle bag. Set a goal to fill that bag weekly with items that no longer add value to your life. 
your brain will go on a hunt for items that it can use to fill that bag. We are programmed to succeed. We want to fill that bag. A third thing is you can try the Oprah Winfrey closet hanger experiment. Oprah introduced us to someone's brilliant idea when it comes to clearing wardrobe clutter. Hang all your clothes with the hangers in the reverse direction. After you wear an item, return it to the closet with the hanger facing the correct direction. After six months, you'll have a clear picture of which clothes you can easily donate. This technique also works great for other items in the house. Apply it to things like toys. Place a sticker on each toy. Place them all on a shelf with the sticker facing the wall. After your child plays with them, have your child or yourself return the toy with the sticker facing away from the shelf wall. After six months, you'll know which toys to donate. Don't stop there. You can also apply this concept to baseball hats, everyday shoes, and folded t-shirts in a drawer. Another idea is to create a room list. Take some time to draft a list of specific rooms and areas within your home or office that need decluttering. In many cases, you may find it's every single room. Listen, before I decluttered, my pantry scared me most of all. I hated going into it because I knew my brain would hurt. Over the years, I would pile things up onto the shelves and just close the door. Well, over a time, you can imagine the mess, right? I dreamed of having a pantry that I could open and see every item. I wanted canned goods to be in one area, not hidden behind bags of flour that expired two years prior. That cluttered pantry took the joy out of cooking completely. And when I finally took the time to organize it, I actually liked cooking again. Determine which areas of your life need organization by figuring out where the mental and physical drains lurk, because they do. And after you have made your list, commit to tackling one space per week. Another idea, get a new view. I always say that my house is cleanest right before I'm expecting company. This is when I go into ultra-organizing mode. I look around my house and I think, well, that's embarrassing. I view my home from the perceived perspective of the visitor, and I'm able to see things that I don't normally see. That pile of extra pillows and blankets that I shoved into the corner of the spare bedroom no longer seems fitting when my best friend is going to see it. Okay, and my last idea is to play the frugal customer. Go around your house and analyze items from the view of a frugal customer. Ask yourself questions like, how much would I actually pay for this? If I saw this on a store shelf today, would I buy it? Would I give this item to someone as a gift? When you start to ask yourself questions like this, you are inviting in truthful answers. Your answers should help you determine which items are clutter and which ones still hold value. So friends, next time clutter tries to sneak into your life, before it has a chance to create chaos and overrun your environment and life, find a technique that works for you so you can sustain your focus, your health, and your overall quality of life. Hey friends, thank you for spending time with me today. If you have any thoughts on today's show, please drop me a note in the comments or tag me on social media. I would love to engage with you. And speaking of engagement, I have been craving more of that in my writing process. So I began something new with a continual fictional story that I'm calling Uprooting. Weekly, I'm posting scenes and also journal entries from my character's point of view to my blog at curveswelcome.com. 
Come join the fun and engage with me along this new book journey. Also, I want to thank all who have become patrons on my Patreon page. Your support means a great deal to me. For more information on joining me on this journey and gaining access to special rewards and also daily jolts to help you stay motivated and in the game of life, visit the link in the show notes. So thanks for tuning in. Until next time, go out there and continue to learn, grow, and embrace life's curves.